Oh my god, you guys. I finally did it. <laughs> my truck has a tail. <laughs> yes. Why does my truck have a tail? Well, I guarantee you it wasn't just so I can say, oh my God, you guys, my truck has a tail. I definitely use this for something, but we're gonna get to that a little later on in this video. What we're gonna explore in this video is the very comprehensive pneumatic system that is on this truck. So there's an air compressor mounted over there and that air compressor drives an air system that can hook up to all four tires and air them all up simultaneously while I'm sitting in the nice air conditioned or heated cab. It's super nice. The pneumatic system also drives two airbags at the rear of the truck that are going to support the weight of a uh, custom com coming camper that's going to go on to this custom flatbed. I know that's a lot of information. Don't worry. We're going to break it down in this video. I'm Jay. You're watching Jay Designs. Let's go. So let's get into this air system. I think the best place to start is just following the intake track here. So starting off right here, these are the two filters. But if we follow these two breathers down, they go right down there. And then they feed to that compressor right there. I know it's a little bit dirty, but that is an ARB twin compressor. The air then comes out and feeds into this air dryer here. And then it feeds out there, distributes the air to the front and the rear of the truck. There's about 40 feet of air line all around the truck. Now I do want to quickly note the location of these two air filters right here. So the main reason for putting them out here is they're getting nice, cool. Cool is the important part, dry air. Um, so the compressor being mounted here, the intakes are actually on this side of the compressor underneath the flatbed. And right on the other side of the frame rail is the hot exhaust. We do not want to be drawing in hot air into the compressor because it actually slows the system down. So with hot air, the air molecules are a little bit more spread out. With cold air, the molecules are much closer and the piston on the air compressor only draws in so much of a volume. So um, if there's cold air, there's a lot more molecules in that volume uh, as the piston on the compressors are coming down. So that's why these intakes are located up and far away from the uh, hot exhaust. Also, the air compressor itself produces heat. So we want to get the intakes away from that. So let's say I wanted to air all four of these tires up. The next step is to go in here. These four short air lines are all hidden up underneath the seat. And then I actually take them and just throw them over my neck. It looks a bit funny, but I assure you it works. And then we're gonna walk over here to one of the Quick Connect air trucks. There are four of these, one really close to each tire. And see if I can do it with one hand, I can. That's connected and then we go unscrew the valve stem grab our quick connect air truck and then just attach it to the air system and then after that we go connect the other three it's pretty simple so now we're in the interior of the truck here with all four tires connected up to this air system i'm gonna go ahead and close the door here for an audio demonstration in a second all four tires are connected and then right here I have the control for the air compressor. I'm going to turn it on. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's not tremendously loud. Like my mic is not on me and I can easily talk over the noise of that air compressor. That's why it's not mounted in the interior and that's why it's not... And it's also not mounted under the engine bay because I didn't want to deal with the heat um, getting to the compressor. But with the compressor running, it's super nice. You can literally just sit in here in the awesome ACR heated cab and post videos to the chat or whatever you want to do. It's super important to note here because this is a truck and it's heavier up front than it is out back. I run different pressures front to rear. It's not really a problem with the system. All you do is once the rear tires reach the pressure that you want, you just go disconnect the rear tires and then the fronts continue airing up. So obviously we can turn the compressor off and on from in here in the interior, but how am I going to read tire pressures when I'm in here, right? Like this is a pretty mundane interior. Nothing crazy going on here. Well, right between my seat here, we have a air gauge connected to the pressure system and you can see there she's holding pressure just fine and the pressure gauge even works if you want to stand outside you can just go like this slip it between the steering wheel and the column and you can look at the pressures from outside of the vehicle it even works through the window if you want to stand outside and talk to your friends while you're waiting for your tires to air up i don't have any friends so i've never done that before well it looks like i'm about to film a rap video now I'm certain somebody's going to make the point that you can just go buy an off the shelf four corner air system and that is true, but I feel like this system has um, a ton of benefits to what I like to call a Medusa system because 
with those systems that you click into your air compressor and then run around to all four of your tires, um, when you open that bag, it just looks like a head of snakes, just like Medusa. Um, there's a couple downsides to those kind of systems, mainly as you're running those lines around the outside of your truck. Those lines are touching the ground, and then when you have to put them back into the truck, they're dirty. The other thing I hate about that too is if you've got 30 to 40 feet of airline ran around your truck, it's going to get tangled, and that absolutely drives me nuts. With this system, you have four short airlines that just go from the truck's body down to the tire. It doesn't get any easier than that. They're not touching the ground and they don't get tangled. Four corner air system super cool, but is it fast? Let's find out right now. So 15 PSI in the gauge. We'll go ahead and start the compressor and the timer right now. She's running. The rear linked up, front linked up. See how long this takes. I'm gonna leave the phone on the hood and go do something else in the meantime. Man, this really sucks. Normally, I, uh, I'll sit in the interior and um, in the air condition in there and um, I'll play with my phone or something like that, but I don't want to touch it, so y'all know I ain't uh, messing with the experiment here. I do want to note, too, the other thing that you would normally do when you're airing up tires is you'd be squatting down beside a tire. Uh, it's just, just uncomfortable to squat down for a long time, you know? And with this, you just go do something else, go talk to your friends. It's, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> And that's time. So there you go. I think that was pretty awesome. Pretty darn fast. You can't see that. Almost five minutes for four 35 inch tires. See the PSI gauge and slide. All right, well, it settled a bit, but 34.6, pretty damn close. So I do want to note that the fact that we're connecting to four tires most likely actually speeds the system up even further. So if you think about the opening on a tire valve, it's an incredibly small opening. If you're just flowing through one of those, there's most likely a lot of resistance. By connecting to four tires and just one, you're quadrupling that cross-sectional area, and therefore the resistance, in theory, should be lower. So before we get too carried away with this awesome four corner air system, let's not forget that this truck has airbags. There's two Schrader valves right here. That is how you would normally adjust airbags. But this system has something a little bit fancier. Let's go back into the interior. So I really wanted to keep this interior looking as clean as possible. No big screens on the dash or anything like that. That's going to encourage things for people to steal. But I said we had a way to control these airbags from the interior and they're hidden right up under here. So nice and out of the way controls left and right airbags that redo the pressures in each airbag. This works incredibly nice. The only one downside is I do have to like turn my head off of the road to look at this. So generally you're only making adjustments to these airbags uh, while you're stopped, which is to be honest with you, fine. Um, and then you can air up or down from right there and it would read the pressures on this display. Generally only pressure that I run in these bags is about five PSI when I'm running around town. Um, it is important to note though, because we have interior adjustment of the airbags and control of the compressor from the inside, we can actually inflate and deflate these bags on the move. Not very important on the road, where that is important is when you're off-road. Um, sometimes you can actually, I've done it before, you can lean the truck one way or the other because we have independent control of left and right bags. Um, and you can keep it from rolling on side slopes or you can keep it from the body from rolling into an obstacle. It's super cool. So there's the airbags left and right underneath the truck. One more cool thing these guys can do is they can obviously raise and lower and roll the truck. What I want to try to do with these guys in the future when I get to doing a custom camper for this guy is I want to actually have the truck offload the camper essentially by itself. So normally what you have to do with the camper is you have to like install your legs and then there's a crank on every single one of those legs. That is a lot of weight and a lot of complexity. These trucks don't take a tremendous amount of payload so we don't want a lot of weight. With those airbags, you can literally just slide the camper leg in. It'd be a simple adjustable leg that's not very heavy. And then we could just use the airbags to actually raise the camper up. And then the truck would drop down up underneath the airbags and then just slide out from underneath the camper. And it should make it super, super fast to offload that camper. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work, but I'm not certain. Um, I'm in the process of building that camper right now. All right, y'all been patiently waiting. What's this tail for? Let's get into it. So as you probably already figured out, the tail of this truck is not really like a tail. 
It's just a, another, a fifth connection, essentially. Obviously, saw the other four. The primary function for the tail of this truck was taking this line and running it out to trailer tires. Uh, and maybe it's just me, but it seems like every time I connect to a trailer, those tires are somewhat flat or entirely flat. So it is super nice to have onboard air and be able to run this 16 foot hose out to as many trailer tires as I need. And then you can just drive away. There's no having to find an air compressor because there's one on the truck. Another use for the tail of the truck is actually using my shop air compressor and hooking that into the truck's air system and airing up all four tires that way. I don't do it very often, but the option is there if I decide to use it. And the final function I actually want to use the tail of this truck for was using the spare tire when it's mounted back here as an air tank. This being a 35 inch tire, it is an absolutely huge air volume and I didn't want to have a tank in the air system. So it would have been awesome to use this thing as an air tank but it didn't really work. The spare tire doesn't work because of the placement in the system. So the air compressor supplies uh, pressure here and the tire supplies pressure here. Uh, when the air compressor is operating, it, it's about at 80 PSI. The max inflation pressure of the tire is 65. So essentially those two pressures end up fighting each other and only about five PSI comes out of the spare tire. If the system was rerouted like this, it would most likely work because then you have 80 PSI here, 65 PSI here, and the system would be at whatever your tires are deflated to. Also, I didn't really want a tank in the system, so it's okay that this doesn't really work. Uh, air tanks actually slow your system down. The beauty of this system and why it would work is because you could disconnect the spare tire from the system. So we could use the air charge that's in this to supply to the system and then disconnect it. So we're not airing up a fifth tire. I also like to take this time to talk about the things that don't really work on the system. So these are high quality Milton air trucks, but every once in a while, I got to take these part, take these guys apart and uh, kind of clean one of the components inside. It's steel and it rusts. Uh, this one is off for service. And also this little air dryer right here doesn't really work. It definitely reduces the amount of moisture in the system, but it's not great. So if anyone knows of an air truck that will survive outside or an air dryer that actually works, please let me know. Here is a simple diagram of the air system. If you're looking to build your own system, definitely draw up a diagram first. It'll help a lot when you're buying fittings. So I would like to add, there is a system that is better than the system that I built. And that comes in the form of something called CTIS or Central Tire Inflation System. So in this clip here, you'll see a, uh, a some kind of a government truck that was running it. Um, essentially, there's a line that runs from the body down to the center of the wheel and then from the center of the wheel out to the valve stem of the tire. This is pretty much the pinnacle of a air system because it allows you to air up and down tires while the vehicle is moving. It's absolutely crazy. You'll also see this system on dump trucks and semis if you keep your eye out for it. It's on military vehicles and uh, I think it's the Mercedes 4x4 squared or the 6x6. They did it on that. It was I think the only factory vehicle that's ever done it. There's a central tire inflation system where you can actually run the airline through the hub of the vehicle. And then from uh, the center of the wheel, it goes out to the valve stem. It's absolutely crazy. Um, with that system, they don't need the, the line going from the body to the center of the wheel because the airline goes through the hub. Um, it's, yeah, I used to drive trucks for the military a long time ago and it was super nice to just hit a button and it would inflate or deflate the tires while the vehicle is moving. It was absolutely awesome. Um, I don't have that on my truck because you would literally have to redesign the entire wheel hub. It'd be incredibly expensive. Maybe one day I'll look into doing the system like you see in this video here where it runs from the body to the center of the wheel to the, to the valve stem. That'd be super cool too because you can inflate and deflate on the move. We talked a lot about airing up tires in this video, um, but I also do want to talk about airing down tires when you're going off road, at least. Um, there are a tremendous amount of benefits to airing down your tires when you're going off road, more traction, more flotation, less wear to the trail, less wear to your vehicle, uh, more suspension travel. If you don't believe me on any of those, I bet you most of y'all didn't know the more suspension travel one. There's gonna be a companion video to this one that's gonna go into great detail and explain Every single one of those things I just mentioned about airing down your tires while you're off-road and more. Make sure and check that out. Hey, thanks for watching. So it's getting to be night here. I can actually turn the lights on so you can see them. Gosh darn, this thing looks good. She's even got some grill backlights. I'm also going to do a how-to video on those grill backlights soon. Uh, it's really easy, actually. It's just two wires wired into that guy, and you're done. Stay tuned.